Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg and in this video I want to talk about high velocity impact simulation in Abacus adding thermal effects and temperature dependency. How to ask your video related questions? Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content of the tutorial. The previous tutorials discussed low velocity impact simulation and general notes about impact analysis. These are the links of the previous tutorials. In this tutorial, the axisymmetric modeling procedure of the high velocity impact with the addition of thermal effects and temperature dependency in Abacus is explained according to a paper. Due to the short duration of the process, there is no time for thermal conductance in the target, so the process is modeled as adiabatic to have a more efficient simulation. Sensitivity analysis has been conducted for two important unknown parameters of the model. Modeling in the axisymmetric space does not limit the generality of the explanations. This is the reference paper. The high velocity impact is simulated according to this paper. This paper investigates the residual speed of the projectile and the impact force when perforating the thin steel plate for several kinds of projectiles with different initial speeds. In this tutorial, the projectile with diameter of 20 mm and the initial velocity of 300 m per second has been modeled. Now I want to talk about rapid process simulation with thermal effects in Abacus. There are two choices to simulate rapid processes with thermal effects in Abacus. We can do the simulation as a fully coupled analysis or an adiabatic analysis. If we want to do the analysis as a fully coupled analysis, we can do it using coupled temp disp step or dynamic temp disp explicit. If we want to do the analysis as an adiabatic analysis, we can use a static general step or dynamic implicit step or dynamic explicit step. As you can see, the solver of these two steps is abacus explicit. Now I want to talk about adiabatic analysis. Adiabatic thermal stress analysis is typically used to simulate high speed manufacturing processes involving large amounts of inelastic strain, where the heating of the material caused by its deformation is an important effect because of temperature dependent material properties. The temperature increase is calculated directly at the material integration points according to the adiabatic thermal energy increases caused by inelastic deformation. Temperature is not a degree of freedom in the problem. The conduction of heat is not taken into account in an adiabatic analysis. For problems where both inelastic heating and heat conduction are critical, a fully coupled Temperature displacement analysis must be performed. Required inputs for materials with plastic dissipation which causes heat generation. Density, inelastic heat fraction, a specific heat, and latent heat if needed. The inelastic heat fraction is the amount of inelastic dissipation used to calculate the increase in temperature. The default value of the inelastic heat fraction is 0.9. If the inelastic heat fraction is not included in the material definition, the heat generated by inelastic deformation is not included in the analysis. Now I want to talk about modeling of the target. Target is a disk with a diameter of 500 mm and a thickness of 12 mm. This is the sketch of the disk. As you can see, its radius is 250 mm and its thickness is 12 mm. Now I want to talk about modeling of the projectile. 
The projectile is modeled as a discrete rigid part. The diameter of the projectile is 20 mm. The diameter of the front face of the projectile is 2 mm. As you can see, the radius of the projectile is 10 mm and the radius of the front face of the projectile is 1 mm. Now I want to show you these settings in Abacus. As you can see, we have two parts. Projectile, which is an axisymmetric discrete rigid, and the target, which is an axisymmetric deformable. This is the sketch of the projectile, and this is the axis of symmetry. And this is the sketch of the target. Now I want to talk about material constants of a steel from the reference paper. These two tables are mentioned in the reference paper and they include the material constants of a steel. I have used these constants to define the material in the abacus property module. Now I want to talk about missed parameters from material constants data. In the mentioned tables, all of the parameters for defining the complete mechanical behavior of the steel are presented except two parameters. Displacement at failure for damage evolution behavior of the JC damage model Reference a strain rate of the JC damage model. This is the reference strain rate of the Johnson Cook damage model and this is the displacement at failure. Now I want to talk about sensitivity analysis for missed parameters. For each of the missed parameters, two values are assumed to perform a sensitivity analysis. Here I have assumed two values for the displacement at failure and two values for reference strain rate. For the displacement at failure, I have assumed 0 0.1 and 0. And for the reference strain rate, I have assumed 50,000 and 1. So by combining these four values, we will have four models. And I have defined all of these models and simulated them and I will compare their results. As you can see here we have four models. Model 1, Model 2, Model 3 and Model 4. In Model 1 the displacement at failure is 0 0.1 and the reference strain rate is 50,000. And in model 2, the displacement at failure is 0 and the reference strain rate is 50,000. And in model 3, the displacement at failure is 0 0.1 and the reference strain rate is 1. And in model 4, the displacement at failure is 0 and the reference strain rate is 1. I go to the property module to illustrate the material definition. I have defined Johnson Cook damage. Here the reference strain rate is 50,000 and damage evolution is 0 0.1. Also I have defined density, elastic mechanical behavior, inelastic heat fraction, plastic mechanical behavior, and the hardening is Johnson Cook. Also, I have defined rate dependency. And also here, the reference strain rate is set to 50,000. Also, I have defined a specific heat. In this simulation, the unit of length is millimeter. Now, I want to talk about partitioning the plate. 
A partition is defined to decrease the element size around the impact location to increase the simulation's accuracy. Here I have defined this partition and this distance is 30 millimeters. And here we have the assembly of the projectile and the plate. Now I want to talk about defining adiabatic explicit analysis. Here I have defined a dynamic explicit step and I have activated include adiabatic heating effects. And I have set the time period to 0 0.00015. Generally, trial and error is needed to determine a reasonable time period. Here I have defined the field outputs. I have set the interval to 150 to have a frame for each microsecond. And here I have activated SDEG and C failure and DMI CRT. These are the standard field outputs in every damage analysis simulation. Also, I have activated temp, which is the element temperature. In an adiabatic analysis, temp is available instead of NT11. NT11 is the nodal temperature and temp is the element temperature at integration points. As you can see, here I have defined the history outputs. A geometrical set named RP is defined from the reference point of the rigid projectile to request the displacement, velocity, and acceleration of the projectile in the vertical direction. Here I have requested A2, U2, and V2 for the RP set, which belongs to the projectile. Now I want to talk about defining contact interaction property. Here I have defined the contact property and it includes tangential behavior and heat generation. Here I have set the friction coefficient to 0.1 according to the reference paper. And here I have defined heat generation and this setting means that all of the friction work will be converted to heat and this setting means that half of the generated heat will be distributed to the target and half of it will be distributed to the projectile. As the projectile is a discrete rigid body, its temperature will not change during the simulation. Now I want to talk about contact definition between the projectile and nodes of the target. In the contact definition, first surface is the projectile and second surface is the nodes of the target. Here you can see the nodes of the target. And this is the surface of the projectile, which is the first surface. Now I want to talk about defining boundary conditions of the plate. Here I have defined a fixed boundary condition and it means that the perimeter of the plate is fixed. And here I have defined X symmetric boundary condition for the plate. According to the modeling in the axisymmetric space, there is no need to define X symmetry boundary condition for the edges of the deformable parts lying on the axis of symmetry. But sometimes the simulation will only be correct with defining this boundary condition. Consequently, it is better to define it for the boundaries of deformable parts lying on the axis of symmetry. And as you can see, this edge lies on the axis of symmetry. Now I want to talk about defining boundary conditions of the projectile. I have defined these two boundary conditions for the reference point of the projectile. Boundary conditions of the discrete rigid parts must be defined on the reference points. Now I want to talk about defining initial velocity equal to 300 m per second for the projectile. I have defined this initial velocity for the reference point of the projectile. Initial conditions of the discrete rigid parts must be defined on the reference points. Now I want to talk about 
defining initial temperature for the plate. I have defined initial temperature equal to 293 kelvins for the plate. If the initial temperature is not defined for the plate, Abacus will assume it to be zero, which is not correct. In this simulation, it is supposed that the initial temperature is equal to the room temperature. As the unit of temperature is assumed to be Kelvin, the initial temperature will be 20 plus 273, which is equal to 293 Kelvins. Now I want to talk about meshing the projectile. I have meshed the projectile using the element size equal to 3 millimeters. Now I want to talk about meshing the target. The element size around the impact region is set to 0.5 millimeter. It must be smaller than the element size of the projectile. I have meshed the projectile with the element size equal to 3 millimeters. As you can see, to mesh these two edges, I have used single bias technique with the minimum element size equal to 0.5 and maximum element size equal to 2. Biasing decreases the number of elements in the region far from the impact zone. This will increase the efficiency of the simulation. Actually, the element size in the impact zone is set to 0.5 mm and in the region far from the impact zone it is set to 2 mm. Also, I have meshed this edge with the element size equal to 2. Here you can see the mesh of the target and as you can see in the arrow direction we have the increase of the element size from 0.5 to 2 due to use of single bias method. Now I want to show you these settings in Abacus. Here we have the assembly. I go to the step module. I have defined a dynamic explicit step and I have activated include adiabatic heating effects. Um, the incrementation is set to automatic and I have not defined any mass scaling uh, because the simulation is dynamic. And this is the field output definition. Also, I have activated a status to remove the completely failed elements from the model during the simulation. And this is the history output definition. This is the contact property definition. And here I have defined the contact. Target contact is a node set from the nodes of the impact zone. To define uh, this node set, first we must define the mesh and then create this node set and use it as the second surface in the contact definition. This is the fixed boundary condition. This is the projectile boundary condition. And this is the X symmetry boundary condition. And this is the mesh of the model.
to mesh this region, I have used the element shape quad and the algorithm is set to advancing front with use mapped meshing where appropriate. And for here, also the element type is quad and I have used advancing front without use mapped meshing where appropriate. Okay. By deactivating this setting, we can have such mesh that um, as you can see here, we have small elements and here we have larger elements. Also, we have used bias technique on these edges. Now I want to show you the results. Now I want to check the results from beginning. Here you can see the perforation of the target. This is the damage initiation parameter for the Johnson Cook model. And when this parameter reaches one, then the damage propagation will start and the material will start to degrade. As you can see, one element is removed. And also this is the damage propagation output or damage propagation parameter. And when it reaches one, then the element is removed from the analysis. Also, I want to check the temperature field. At the start of the simulation, the temperature of the target is equal to 293 Kelvin. And during the simulation, the temperature increases in the impact zone. This is because of the plastic work and friction work which are converted to heat. As you can see, the temperature is increasing. Now I want to compare the Mises stress contours of four simulations. This is the result of model 1, this is the result of model 2, this is the result of model 3, and this is the result of model 4. As you can see, there are some differences between the contours of four simulations. Actually, the difference is in the impact zone. Now I want to compare the temperature contours of four simulations. This is the result of model 1, this is the result of model 2, this is the result of model 3, and this is the result of model 4. And as you can see, 
Here we have some difference between the temperature contours in the impact region. There are some differences between the maximum temperatures. Also, the unit of temperature is Kelvin in all of the simulations. Now I want to compare the projectile velocity in four simulations. As you can see, I have plotted the velocity of projectile in four simulations in different colors. And all of them starts from the initial velocity equal to 300 meter per second and all of them decrease during the simulation. Here I have magnified the end of the velocity curves for better comparison. The comparison of the final velocities shows that by an increase in the displacement at failure and reference strain rate, the final velocity will decrease. It is entirely according to our engineering intuition because by an increase in the displacement at failure, more energy is absorbed by each element before its complete failure. Likewise, by an increase of the reference strain rate, the damage initiation criteria will be satisfied later, which means that the damage mechanism will be started later and more energy will be absorbed from the projectile. Now I want to compare the projectile acceleration of four simulations before applying filter. Here you can see the acceleration of projectile in four simulations in different colors. And here I have compared them after applying the Butterworth filter. All of the accelerations are filtered using the Butterworth filter with a cutoff frequency equal to 250,000 Hz. The package including CAE, JNL, IMP and a README file is ready to purchase. The README file contains tips and tricks and detailed explanations. The package price and payment details are provided in the video description. You can contact me using Telegram or WhatsApp or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp and making special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high quality simulations for thesis, exercises and industrial projects. And we offer support in writing the modeling and result discussion part of your thesis. Also we have consulting services for MSc PhD positions or job interviews and we can help you to prepare the presentation of your simulation works. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.